14 i know you right the term law the term law in no law no liberty in no law no liberty refers to due process of law refers to due process of law now read this man enjoyed liberty in state of nature he enters into contract to avoid inconvenience and you can write this uh, something different uh, man man enjoyed liberty man enjoyed liberty in state of nature in state of nature what 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 the, now stop writing and tell me something how is lock a very distinguished thinker from his uh, predecessors like as total or machiavelli or hobbes what what good things he sees in humans in man no no there is a trait reason very good as jita reason because uh, we have this seen this right that perfect balance of reason and passion is in man yeah. yes because of the presence of reason in a very uh, proportionate manner along with passion of this say no no passion will overtake it lock says no no reason will always prevail at times you passion will better the out reason or passion would overshadow the reason for that situation state is needed right so even during state of nature because man is a reasoned creature he will not do any weird thing that is what was the discussion in the last class can you recall that so please write that man uh, uh, what you wrote man was enjoying nay someone uh, in state of nature sir we stopped it in state of nature okay in state of nature because of because of because of reason within andar uske reason hai full stop in order to remove inconvenience in order to remove inconvenience man needs authority in the man needs common authority in the form of state correct and there are just three rights that man has transferred so you read this man has transferred only three rights man has transferred only three rights right to make laws right to execute laws right to adjudicate laws government so can you repeat those three rights right to make laws right to execute laws and right to adjudicate the laws a d j u d i c a t we have already discussed the meaning so it is like you know what a uh, man has delegated the functions you know what is delegation like uh, i have been delegated the task to teach you political science okay this is delegation so man has delegated certain functions to the state just three, these three functions so write this man has delegated man has delegated these three functions in which area as in i did not understand it shares in which area the three that we mentioned only these three areas no no, no not property is not here okay. acha on which topics to make laws and adjudicate this you are talking okay we'll see first you write this man has delegated these rights to the state you wrote it state cannot stop state cannot make any law state cannot make any law which has which has not been transferred which has not been transferred on rights on rights like right to life liberty and property now stop writing and see locks uh, no law no liberty we have seen two things procedure established by law due process of law right now a question came that on which topics state can make laws forget on what topic state can make laws let us try to recall on what topics state cannot make laws uh, who asked that question shreyas on which topic uh, state cannot make laws the three topics tell you have written it right to so shreyas are you there others are answering you are not ha huh. right to life liberty and property so now except for these three things right to life which means state will not deny you life right to liberty now liberty is an very you know generous term your movement your willing to willingness to do things the way you want property he believes in absolute right to property so except for that like if if state says that anyone who wants to be a doctor needs to do a degree in medical science this is a regulation state is making a law that all those who want to be uh, a practicing doctors need to have a degree in medicine otherwise they will be called quacks jhola chap right so this is again a regulation these things can be regulated if you want to design a building you need to be an architect 
if you want to build bridges you need to be an engineer correct so these are the regulations brought by the state if you want to contest elections you need to be an indian citizen a major if you want to be the president of india you need to be more than 35 years of age so these are the regulations brought by the state but do not try to make laws on uh, anything that compromises life liberty and property and if if at all state tries to make laws that restrict or ends right to life right to property right to liberty then as per john locke's famous statement no law no liberty the very attempt by the state to enter into the uncharted territory the prohibited zone life liberty and property any attempt by state to make laws on these three topics would be against what which one the two concepts that we have discussed very good due process of law the procedure established will not be seen whether the states uh, followed the procedures the methods were followed state cannot your intent is bad if you are trying to formulate laws on these three topics acha it's written here that ha uh, man's right to property life if any law restricts or takes away these three things it goes against the due process of law anyone who is having a doubt here anyone who is having a doubt law in no 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 liberty means what criminal law that criminal law deprives you of your, you of your uh, liberty and everything and life that yes john locke would say not needed john locke will say not needed is the father of liberals some liberals to this day are against capital punishment okay ha huh. how would a criminal be brought to justice now for that uh, of course everything applied in extreme will result in chaos i'm not favoring john locke how would justice be done for that there is something more that we need to know not here that is theories of punishment deterrent theory retributive theory distributive theory so on and so forth we'll see that as well locke's concern is not justice locke's concern is liberty okay did you understand this locke's concern is liberty anything in extreme will become uh, uh, kind of uh, radicalized when you start believing that what you are saying is the only correct way isn't it a radical opinion suppose people say that they are champions of liberty right there are many champions of liberty all these liberals are the most illiberal human beings in our country they say that we are champions of liberty absolute right what could happen if there is absolute right read dr ambedkar okay grammar of anarchy speech how he has he has picked you know very uh, proper adjectives for such people that you need to abide by the law you cannot say that you have the perfect uh, freedom okay absolute freedom is is a misnomer it's a kind of illusion okay it's not going to happen so if there is perfect liberty everyone is willing to do everything where will be the authority and if authority is not there won't there be a chaos and so when as you said that you do not favor capital punishment well many people say this but what about individuals who are damaged beyond repairs a person remi uh, and the only thing that they say that uh, it does not serve as a deterrence because the criminal is liquidated now what motivation would have been if kasab was alive how is his killing how is his capital punishment not a deterrence or his remaining alive would have been a deterrence for anyone that's a very silly argument actually that someone who is uh, in front of eyes will serve as a deterrent everyone knows what he is capable of and because the roaming of such people freely jeopardizes my right to life and liberty your right to life and liberty right and of course supreme court says rarest of the rare rarest of the rare only when then capital punishment is given and that too after multiple layers of scrutiny right multiple layers of scrutiny the supreme court then the presidential mercy petition was there and for all such people for all such people for all such a dreaded terrorist it is yakub menon there was afzal guru there are other lined up mohammad tunda then there is this guy yasin bhatkal so the acts that they have uh, engaged in how will justice be served okay of course scandinavian countries are talking about uh, they have done away with these things but you know usa has uh, this uh, capital punishment not all societies are same right new zealand is not having uh, i guess uh, capital punishment what happened there a gunman walks in kills so many people so this argument that it does not again there are theories of punishment where we will discuss these things this you understood 
john locks due process of law if you go into the restricted zone to make laws you are violating the due process of law doctrine what is due process we have seen it now one more uh, write you uh, write this if state if the state tries to violate the due process you know how the state will violate the due process bata how will the state violate due process no what indirect methods there are three restricted areas ha uh, property life and liberty good if the state tries to violate the due process then then people can revolt against the state then this is what john locke is saying people can revolt against the state the liberty of man the liberty of man cannot be compromised the liberty of man cannot be compromised because of due process of law are you understanding it or not do i need to repeat this please please tell me freely anyone who has even a slightest of doubt yes yes government would change people will make the government change people will change the government man has submitted certain rights to state except for three life property and liberty state shall not make any laws to restrict or abate or end these three things right to life property liberty if the state tries to do that state would be violating the due process of law doctrine due process of law tells us that a law can be critically scrutinized regarding the intent behind the law which is much wider than the shallow concept of procedure established by law which only checks which only checks whether procedures and methods were followed or not due process checks the intent behind the law so state going into restricted zone is not having a good intent it's violating the principle of due process man has all the rights to revolt against the state this is what we have discussed no 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 that was not uh, what the supreme court said okay now you write uh, what was the last line liberty of is uh, uncompromised something like that we will see it uh, on aadhar also supreme court said uh, aadhar was also tried as uh, money bill and it passed it passed as a money bill L- leave it today leave it today uh, very long discussion it is are you aware of all the be compromised because of due process of law ha we have written till ha okay uh, are you aware of all the uh, details of gst there is something called gst council there is a governing council so let us see these things later on okay now you write this uh, lock says lock says that no law underline no law and write it under single inverted comma these two words no single no law comma close no law implies not recognizing no law within single inverted comma implies not recognizing due process not recognizing due process that will that will result into loss of liberty that will result into loss of liberty so no law see it is not as simple as prima facie it sounds that if there is no law there shall be no liberty some of you said this right it was not what it sounded that if there is no law liberty will end because law will restrict uh, kind of what uh, chaos okay will bring some common minimal points it's not that three things which man has not compromised state tries to make laws to restrict these three things three rights straight it venturing into the doctrine of violation of due process how is it different from procedure established we have already seen that so no law means no due process of law is it all right see see indian supreme court accepted the principle of due process of law in the interpretation of article 21 melka gandhi case how many of you know this case anyone else you know mrs gandhi mrs melka gandhi yes what happened with the passport No, 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 no. You, you all know Mr. Gandhi, right? She is an MP, Women and Child Development. Come on, she has her own identity apart from being Sanjay Gandhi's wife and Varun Gandhi's mom and Rahul Gandhi's chachi. Arey, she has been minister, huh? heads and tails. I, for a moment, turned vegetarian after watching her program, Heads and Tails. When I was a small kid in school, she is a vegan, right? So she talks a lot about animal atrocity and everything. So. of course uh, she is an established politician now her son is one she comes from the gandhi family uh, indira gandhi had lost the elections we are talking about post emergency era after 
see what happens now we will know this because it's a very landmark judgment indira gandhi had lost the elections and janata party was the government moraji desai prime minister now there was a guy called uh, choudhary charan singh and uh, they wanted to because they had suffered for 3 years a lot when indira gandhi was there so they wanted to kind of win against was there okay all these people came together bhartiya jansangh bhartiya jansangh is the predecessor to the bjp it was the political front of rss like today we have bjp as the political front of rss it was bhartiya jansangh most of the jansanghis are today in bjp almost all so they what they did uh, menka was uh, menka is the daughter in law of uh, indira gandhi she was going abroad and her passport was seized by the then incumbent government okay ha ha have you stopped us not allowed okay so her passport was seized now she she went to the supreme court because my right to liberty i am going somewhere in some other country for whatever purpose how am i a security threat on what basis the government of india is denying me my liberty she went to the supreme court okay and supreme court examined it that yes the intent behind this law is not correct so that is why it's called the menka gandhi case her passport was returned after the apex court intervention and she went where the, she wanted to understood what happened in ak gopalan case judiciary followed the procedure established by law judiciary did not see whether preventive detention is right or wrong the intention behind preventive detention is right or wrong whether he has been arrested under a law that has been duly recognized duly passed by the existing legislature that is what judiciary said so that is why we as students of political science see i always call myself student i don't call myself teacher because this is an ever learning subject so we all as student of political science we refer to indian judiciary during chacha nehru's time as era of passive judiciary you can write this in your exam era of passive judiciary nehruvian era okay judiciary was not anyone having a question so in menka gandhi case judiciary tried to widen its horizon any questions here property now what he says about property you know it right absolute everyone can have as much as property as one want and see there are certain things we need to know before we move into his what his uh, call for property is he says that initially everything belonged to everyone and what was happening during uh, uh, this uh, early man's time was there a restriction everything belonged to everyone but then what happened community life came people had uh, certain positions and people are having different set of skills also different sets of skills like uh, someone is kind of uh, having more uh, inter- intellect someone is more hard working someone is very lazy you have seen these things someone toils day in and out and so differently able people will carve different fortunes for themselves so that is what he said that property will is a result of your hard work and your intellect so don't ask people who have been working hard and who have sharpened their intellect and applied that uh, kind of a sharp brain to earn a fortune to give it to others got it let us see this in the state of nature everything belongs to everyone more hard working and industrious people became property owners property is the product of one's labor and intellect okay one should have complete rights on the fruits of his labor so why would anyone be denied of it why would anyone be not having kind of uh, i have earned i have toiled hard for it why should i not get the result okay so this is again a very liberal view a right to property remains even after an individual's death it includes right to inherit property okay so it remains even after the death you can pass it on your coming generation can inherit your property because it is you who have worked hard for it and it's only your child your property your next generation who is laying claim over it okay this is his view on property he does not want to restrict any type of right to property are you understanding it 
locks justifies absolute right to property and state's role is limited to preservation of property that state state is a trust right so state should make sure that property is preserved in a way it should be so that it can be uh, it belongs to the rightful owner it can be enjoyed the way he wants to do agriculture he wants to let fallow he wants to make a building on it he wants it to give it to some other things to uh, lend it to someone his choice state would ensure that and if he wants to pass it on as an inheritance to the coming generation okay state will just preserve it the way it is any questions here nothing i guess yes 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 oh my god you don't know right to property was a fundamental right should i tell it okay it's a very long discussion you know <laughs> yes article 3119f of course i'll give you some hints because don't don't take me to igp now because when i start teaching igp i feel like teaching it all the time when i start teaching uh, thinkers i want to teach it yes kesavanand bharti i have already sent you the entire article and everything see what happens have you heard about land reforms now listen very carefully i'll speak for very few minutes on this because i want to complete mr lock and we have few minutes here listen carefully all of you someone again galaxy chala gaya fir galaxy kahan ho acha he is here someone else is gone again you will miss this thing whoever has left please convey this what i am telling R- land reform land reform was one of the very you know uh, cherished uh, kind of uh, ambitions of the government of india after independence now what was land reform there were few things land stealing uh, consolidation of land holdings land to the tiller tiller is farmer that land will belong to the one who is cultivating the land not to the zamindar the land owner you cultivated land is yours sealing of land no one will he- uh, held land no one will ha- possess land in excess of something kind 15 acres so government was going on to you know uh, bring land reforms and they, one thing in order to increase the productivity of land you need to consolidate the land farming land so how will you consolidate the land what happens in indian agriculture with every passing generation land is divided a man having two sons his two sons having two more sons and two sons having further and i am very being very conservative when i am saying just two they can have 20 right it's a geometric progression instead of arithmetic progression in indian hinterlands yes for a long time now now of course birth rate has been decently checked but still uh, we have few few more steps to take here so fragmentation is happening now one one person who is uh, suppose there are 100 acres of land yes and uh, that uh, was to be told land was not uh, given to those who were not having land because they were poor farmers zamindars were holding the land so government brought a law bhudan there is a guy there was a guy called acharya binoba bhave he started with what is called bhudan bhu is zameen land dan is donation so donate your land but they did not uh, most of them in north india especially in uh, bihar up and madhya pradesh and rajasthan and haryana and punjab did not do that it was limited to few south indian states bengal to a certain extent few few not all so land uh, the the, the zamindar did not part with his land and in order to take excess land from someone and give it to the tiller there was actually a home ministry report in 60s which said that if in 70s actually after green revolution that if we do not give land to the tiller this green revolution will turn into a bloody red revolution so because it widened the inequities okay so they said that let us give this land back uh, to people but how will you give it back because land is fixed few people are owing acres of land so you need to take it back but article 191f says right to property absolute right fundamental right so you need to scrap it from fundamental right part 3 are you understanding once it is scrapped from the list of fundamental right only then can government take over your land if you have excess of land else you will say it is my fundamental right how can you stop me so 191 f 31 c needs to be done away with till here it's clear till here no issues that if it's a fundamental right government cannot take your land by calling it excess of land but government wants to implement socio economic justice directive principles of state policies part 4 part 4 is in confrontation with part 
fundamental lights are part 3 dpsp is a part 4 in order to implement one of the provisions of dpsp one of the provisions of fundamental lights are to be scrapped yahan tak samajh aaya aapke so what would happen now which constitutional provision will be enshrined and which constitutional provision will be eclipsed part 3 fundamental lights very important part 4 now here comes the legendary konan bharti he passed away three days back i have written everything and the article has been shared with you please read it and then we will talk about these things when we will study indian government and politics okay i am i am restricting it here else this will we'll come back to the basic structure of trying just read that article and i have written something after that article read that too and then we will revisit this in uh, igp and polity okay state is night watchman it has no welfare function see even the welfare role of state has been done away with for lot liberals do not want a welfare state i told you about india trust trust with destiny arvind panagri and jagdish bhagwati they are critical of welfare state something which amartya sen and john dreams talks about because they are liberals economic liberals they would say increase the wealth only then you will distribute the wealth do not go for doles do not go for subsidies do not go for enabling positions also do not go for affirmative action because that harms the merit this is the argument of classic liberals john lock is the father so state is a night watchman it has only few regulatory purposes it has no welfare function welfare will come on its own when state will restrict itself to the role for what it has been confined to okay and that is why he is called possessive individualism of john locke let us read this property is the creation of man and there is no contribution from society now something gandhi will never agree on what is gandhi saying that no no if uh, birla's gt birla he was friends with gt birla there is this birla ashram also that if you are making crores of money is because someone is feeding you the poor farmer someone is giving you clothes someone is doing your dishes so society has contributed lok is saying no completely un gandhian regards to this point there is no contribution from society so man is under no obligation to pay back to society now this is where gandhi contradicts classic liberals this political thought justifies private ownership and absolute right to property because it is sheer hard work and intellect of the individual not of the society so i'll do what i want to property right is a natural right although this concept goes back to ancient greeks locke is the first modern exponent of it okay natural right either neither can be created nor taken away by the government it's a natural right come on and in modern times only he talks about it see again his times renaissance time is going on okay capitalism is in its very nascent stage nation states are emerging so and he wants to restrict the role of the government right government has no business to do business wala concept laissez faire which adam smith talks about so of course adam smith is after lock but the line of thinking is same so government should have a minimum function is what i am saying lock's idea that the world belongs to the industrious and rational is what sociologist max weber okay there is this famous sociologist called max weber termed as protestant ethics now protestant what is protestant christianity is divided into catholics and protestant it was an ethic that emerged amongst the puritan middle class in locke's time and correspondent to the beginning of capitalism i guess right so what what we are learning here see there was this uh, uh, a kind of uh, not exactly rebellion a confrontation within christianity because you see church you know what it was doing so a different roman catholics roman catholics are still you know uh, uh, they, they can be called a majority until the decades of 90s in europe now against that emerged the protestant they protested against the church that's why they are called protestants now they say that church will again same thing restricted role do not come into the uh, politics and everything so weber says that this is what protestant ethics is all about right middle class who who wants to get rid of excess of church who wants to uh, live a very individualistic self centric life far away from the you know daily ogling of state whether a church or whether monarch or whether any other form of government will endorse this view what john locke is talking about 
that is why john lock has succeeded in countries like europe and usa okay john lock said let the man be free from the yoke of the state he inspired the american revolution imagine so this is how uh, weber has viewed it that you people are finding shelter in his thought because it suits your upbringing and your line of thinking okay he has this guide he is not very critical that industrious and national isn't it an element of elitism someone is very hard working someone is very rational we are talking about few people any okay so there is an element of a tinge of elitism involved in john locke you understand locke has built his theory of government on the individualistic nature of man okay he gives absolute right to property locke has transferred all natural rights to state and creates absolute state or leviathan state this we'll see again leviathan kya hota hai liberalism talks about the right of man and limits the power of the state one line that's it this is how we sum it questions anyone anyone anything nothing yes of course they are pro bourgeois of course they are pro bourgeois because he favors absolute right to property how will a proletariat favor him sir will a landless farmer get inspired by john locke when he will learn that he says absolute right to property when he learn that locke says that uh, property is a result of intellect and hard work he will not right anything else so i think uh, whatever i wanted to convey is okay with you for today uh, something little is remaining that we'll see and we'll move to the next thinker now who is next if us are like the last point as in this one limits the power of state now uh we need to see efas in order to decide that because it not only limits the power of state it also limits the powers of individual what is article 17 talking about krishna tell me abolition of untouchability so it restricts the state or the individual was state doing discrimination as untouchable or individuals were doing answer me then individuals were doing so is it right to say that efas are like last point efas restrict both individuals and state that we'll see when we'll study efas certain provisions restrict the state certain provisions restrict the individual certain provisions restrict the both both of them so fr are six but it takes me uh seven six to seven hours to teach it entire six fundamental right along with case laws of actually there is more than what meets the eye there are so many interpretations of the apex court so many case laws and the exact philosophy behind the fundamental rights you can see these things first let us understand the thinker i think the next thinker that we have russo jean jacques russo russo or mill whichever you say let us start with russo because we have just studied john locke there are many similarities so let us meet tomorrow and discuss it take good care study very hard and keep revising okay.